My wife has two brothers and an uncle who all three served in Vietnam, and I thought that it would be really nice if I was to turn a pin for each of them as a thank you for your service. Jason Rose makes a really nice Vietnam tribute blank, and it contains a grain of sand from Vietnam, and there's a certificate of authenticity that gives you the longitude and latitude of where that sand was gathered. I thought the Elegant Monarch would be a really nice kit to pair these with. It's a beautiful kit. It's got some nice filigree around the uh, center band that really sets it off and makes it look beautiful. So what we're going to do today is we are going to turn these three pins for my wife's family. Here's a little better look at the blank. One nice feature about these blanks is they come ready to go to the lathe. It has a Sierra style 2764 inch tube in the end of the blank. They're already trimmed to the perfect length. So all you have to do is apply your bushings. And in this case, we'll be using turn between center bushings. Chuck it up in the lathe and you're ready to turn. I'll be turning without the aid of my shop vac today as the motor appears to have burned up. But I do have a toothbrush handy so we can clean any of the ribbons off of the bushings. And I just sharpened my tool, so I am ready to turn. Man, do I miss my shop back. <laughs> this sure made a mess. That blank turned very nicely. Uh, we are ready now to move on to the uh, micro mesh and start polishing this blank up. For micro meshing, I'm down around 1100 RPMs. I'm just gonna run through the pads. There are nine of them, one at a time. And uh, as we build up a slurry, we'll wipe that off before we move to the, to the next pad. I thought I would just talk for a minute. Uh, I won't show the whole process because it is kind of lengthy, but I get asked quite often, you know, what's better, turning on a mandrel or turning between centers? And I'll be quite honest with you. I don't, I can't tell a whole lot of difference between the two of them. I go back and forth. If I'm turning a pin that has two blanks, uh, many times I'll just go ahead and use uh, my mandrel with my mandrel saver. And if I'm turning a pin that has a single blank, like one of these Sierras, um, then I go for the turn between centers. I get the same results regardless of which method I use. And I do appreciate both methods just about equally. There's the first pad. It's already starting to look nice. I'm just gonna finish up with the other pads. I'll turn this camera off and I'll come back and show you guys what this blank looks like once I've ran through all nine pads. I just finished polishing this blank with the micro mesh. It looks amazing. There's a lot of detail in this blank. You got the Vietnam wall down at the bottom. You've got a helicopter up at the top. You've got the service ribbon across the middle and of course the grain of sand. It's a beautiful blank. I'm going to go ahead now and buff it up with a little Renaissance wax and then we should be ready to uh, run it across the buffing wheels and assemble it. Putting a very generous amount of Renaissance on there, probably way more than I need. This stuff does an amazing job, but it just happened when I dipped out of the, the jar, I just happened to get uh, quite, quite a lot on my finger. 
just going to rub it in until I can feel a little bit of friction on my finger and then I'll know that the blank has been buffed. Starting to feel the friction down here at the uh, lower end of the blank. And there it is. It's starting to come in at the upper end as well. Just want to make sure that there are no slippery sections on the blank. You want to work the whole blank. Yeah, I can feel it. All right, that blank is now ready to go to the buffing wheels. Let me get everything switched over on the lathe and we'll buff it up. Got the buffing wheels on the lathe. We're running at about 1100 RPMs. I'm going to apply just a little bit of blue rosin. I put the blank on a mandrel so that I can hold it tightly and not have to worry about, about uh, losing control and having it fly across the shop. And with using these buffing wheels, this is where you're going to see this blank really come to life. I mean, take a look at how shiny it's already getting at the bottom of the blank versus the top. Buffing makes a huge, huge difference. Details that I could not see in the blank are starting to appear. And that's just because the, the, the more you polish the resin, the clear resin, you know, the, the easier it is to see everything. It, it almost, I don't want to say it magnifies it, but it really enhances the beauty of the blank. All right, let's take it across the final wheel just to kind of polish it a little bit. There is no resin or rosin of any kind on this other wheel except the residue from the first the first wheel it is just basically to uh, kind of clean and final polish takes the dust off really starting to shine this blank is looking extremely nice take a look at that look how it shines now you can really see just how beautiful these tribute blanks are let's head over to the bench and get this assembled into a kit I'm over at the bench and I'm ready to assemble my blank into a pin kit. Now this Monarch kit is extremely simple to use. It's, it's a lot like a Sierra. You've got a clip and you're just going to slide that onto the cap section. And we're going to position the cap on, make sure you get the right, blank, the right side of the blank. This is the back side because this would make the pin right side up. I'm going to open my press and I'm going to drop my pin in. And I'm just, I'm going to start this just by giving it just a little shot. You don't want to, ooh, you, I mean, while I'm talking here, I'm letting it slide a little bit. You just want to start it straight, but don't press it all the way on. And the reason why is, let me get this up a little closer so you can see, there's a line where the, the uh, label meets. You want to put the clip right over top of that line. So now that I've done that, I can go ahead and put this back into the press and we can finish our press. There we go. Hope that didn't get too blurry for you. Now that looks really nice. Let's assemble the rest of this pin. There's a little ball on the end of the ink refill. We're going to pull that off. The spring here has a large end and a small end. The small end goes onto the ink refill. Ink refill goes into the nib. And then we're going to take our transmission and we're going to seat and thread our transmission. Make sure you get that good and tight. There are a lot of parts like this nib can unthread and the back of the transmission can unthread. So make sure you've got everything good and tight. Then you'll just slide this right into the pin. And what you've got is a gorgeous pin that anyone would be proud to carry. Isn't that beautiful? I really hope you enjoyed this video. I'm having a great time turning these pins and this is just a nice way for me to say thank you to uh, my wife's family for their service. I'm gonna turn the other two off camera and I'll finish this video with a parting shot of all three of them together. I'd like to thank you for joining me in the shop today. I want you to know that you are always welcome in my shop. Come back and see me again real soon and have a great evening.